7 o'clock on Thursday, May 25th, starting a planning board meeting in Grafton. Um, I have I have minutes and agenda. Uh, Amelia Cushing could not make it, and so Paul Olivier is sitting for her. And then uh, Russell Poitras, the select board ex officio, also cannot make it. Um, so, so uh, anyone else want a minute or an agenda? Um, all right, so we've got. Angus Gorman, Alice Roy, Jake Vogel, Maureen O'Reilly, Sabrina Kerwin, and Paul Levier. Um, I'm going to start my thing. Yeah. All I'm doing is starting a video and taking a video of the table. But you're taping? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's what I mean. Yeah. Right on. Okay, um, let's look at the um, let's look at the April twenty seventh minutes, and uh, there's a few suggested changes that we can try to find a compromise on, um, but those changes are noted on the agenda, and um, when we're ready to discuss, we can just start discussing. Get a look at this so far? Yes. Uh, just to clue you in, um, Rich emailed at you may have all gotten Rich's email. Yes. All right. And I uh, think his suggestion is legitimate, although I think that his suggested text is a little bit more detailed and, uh, than the minutes would ever typically contain, especially in something that wasn't really a planning board topic. Um, and so, uh, I mean, Jake, you're not a member, but you are here, and you did see that, and uh, wouldn't be the worst in the world to include you. Um, that it, it, Rich pointed out that you made, he, he did it in a roundabout way, but he pointed out that uh, there were multiple public comments I had not included any of his comments or your comment in the public comment. Um, I was simply expecting to add this line to make it clear that you had, and I don't know what you think about that. Okay, is there, well, I guess I know why, but is there a reason you wouldn't include uh, Rich's? No, no, I, I'm including Rich's too. I, I think that his blurb is is superfluous. Oh, but, I mean, that is, can I just grab it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely. I guess just go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to waste any time on this. It's, we don't need to be wasting time on this to begin with. But um, does anyone have a problem with my? Uh, Rich has a long blurb about things, and he's talking about the uh, public fool system, and I don't really want to go there, so I think the way to put it is Rich expressed his distaste for the public school system and the tax money associated with its operation, and he believes the money could be better spent elsewhere. 
he might not like it to be concise, but I don't think he would disagree with that statement. Concise is good. Um, what do you think, Jake? Basically catches the gist of it, right? Probably. Okay, cool. Let's just go with that. Uh, anyone feel like making a motion to accept these as... We, we would simply be adding my tentative suggestion to the public comment section. So I'd entertain a motion to... I'll make that motion to accept these. The minutes as amended? Yep. All right. All right, all in favor? All right. Okay, great. Um, that's wonderful. Jake, thanks for your participation on that. Um, and, um, well, uh, correspondence, we have received a return to sender. Uh, it was a certified mail that I imagine was in a butter for the Tomkevich subdivision. Um, these things happen. Um, I was just, uh, if we can't reach them by certified mail, it's gonna be very challenging to reach them otherwise, so the best thing to do is to simply attach it to the subdivision in the filing where I filed it upstairs in the town office, and um, there's a note on it as to why, and usually we don't have to cross that bridge at all. Um, the other correspondence is we received information on the Grafton Planning Board budget um, versus actual expenditure. Um, looks like we have our $200 budget. We have spent $25 on supplies. Uh, no, we haven't. That is an L chip fee, which will be reimbursed when the um, We, have, we, we haven't spent any money. We spent $25. We, we used our bank account to cover $25 for the L chip fee, which is the, um, the, the fee for conservation that's included in every subdivision. And when the Tom Kovic check clears through the town, the town um, will put $25 of that back into the planning board budget. So in effect, we have spent $0 this year. Um, so that's just some information for us. And then, um, business. I had received a phone call, which I took longer to return uh, the call than I meant to, but uh, someone was looking to merge three properties uh, in a voluntary merger. And they saw that the, the provided sheet only has two. Um, I called the Registry of Deeds to ask what they would like, and they said, you put your planning board signature on it, we'll do anything you want. <laughs> and so um, it's, uh, it's $12 to record one page, and it's another $4 to record a page after that for a voluntary merger. But they did suggest it was perfectly fine to simply clearly handwrite a third book page, date, map, and lot number somewhere where there's room on this page and make it clear somehow that it is three lots being merged together. Um, and as long as it's done tidily, there wasn't an issue. So uh, we may see a triple voluntary merger come down the pike, and we just know that we can we can do that, and we're allowed to get creative accord, according to the registry. Is this three small properties? I think so. I didn't get to actually talk to the person, but I think I know where it is, and I could be completely wrong, but I get the impression it might be some properties on Kilton Pond, but I, I don't know that for a fact. So, um, all right, um, let's see, uh, bit other business, I mailed the Tom Kevich subdivision, and so that's all, and, and they have paid for it, so that's all clear and in the registry's hands, um, and let's see, there was, actually, there was one more correspondence. Well, last time I did this, my video stopped recording. I'll start right back up if someone can remind me. Um, Gary Whitney emailed me an informational courtesy um, for potential planning board interest. Uh, he was doing some hiking in the area, he was concerned about public being kept off of a likely public way. Um, and he digging it a little deeper. He's pretty good at getting to the bottom of, of things. Um, 
and uh, uh, we, we had a little back and forth discussion, but the basic gist of it is that we are both under the impression that there are a number of Class 6 roads in town, which, um, and in other towns too, I think, where the abutting property owners are misinterpreting the subject to gates and bars clause and actually locking the gates. Um, I know that on Stevens Road, there was actually a time when the gate was locked and a fake United States Forest Service shield was tacked to a tree. <laughs> I mean, we all know that there is no national forest in Grafton or Springfield, and it was clearly just an attempt to dissuade people who didn't know any better. And subject to gates and bars in the RSA, it's very clear that these are not to be locked, that the public needs to be able to open the gate, shut it behind them, and it's for agriculture containment and stuff like that. And people abuse that because they suppose that the prospective users don't know, don't have the legal firepower, aren't bold enough to, to uh, test it. Etc. And yeah, I mean, no one likes like high horsepower jeeps ripping up public rights away, and that's usually where the retaliation comes from. But at the same time, it remains a public right away. Anyway, Gary was concerned about the ex extension of Cherry Hill, which we believe is still a class six. He's pretty sure it is, and just wanted to be transparent about the value of class six roads and them being public rights away. So that was a, not really immediately a planning board concern, although there is, I, 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 think, I think it is, and, and he, he hinted at that, that uh, there is a town map of the town roads posted on the wall, which allegedly is the planning board's business, and uh, since we're all done with our subdivision regulations and completely finished with our new master plan, we have all the time in the world to attack that. So, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Is there also a safety issue having those roads on um, the gate that's locked? Well, I can offer one interesting anecdote, and that is um, Stevens Road is on the corner of the Pluff's house on Kinsman Highway, and it goes into Springfield and comes out on 4A at that point called Old Grafton Road. Um, so it's intertown. Um, and Springfield doesn't maintain it, but they, they post it uh, no wheeled vehicles from March to May or something. You know, like mud no, no one in mud season like preserve it for the rest of the time. Um, and there's a gate, it's not locked. Um, and but the rest of the year, you can enter from 4A, go up through Springfield, up and over the top of the mountain, come back down, and after almost getting stuck many times, come to a locked gate in Grafton. Mm -hmm. And that's where it becomes a real safety issue. If, if the consistency of locking at both ends is there, mm -hmm. well, you know, that's too bad because someone is pro prohibiting a public way from being used, but when you can start at one end, get all the way to the other end, and reach a lock gate. That's, that's just downright stupid. Um, who, who's locking the gate? The, 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 the neighboring lock? property owner, Maybe. who is... And this comes right back to the, like, malicious versus ignorant, if you will. We don't actually know. A lot of people, I think, probably actually do think that they are allowed to lock a gate on a Class 6 road because it's the subject to gates and bars, but the RSA is very clear that you are not allowed to lock a gate. But the people who just read the, don't read the fine print, I think they may be led to believe that they can, that, oh, why would you have a gate if you can't lock it? Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's also other people who are very fully aware that they're not supposed to, but they just do it anyways and wait for somebody to actually give them a hard time. Because most people don't, they just turn around and, mm -hmm. you know keep their mouth shut. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, it, it, it is, and I, I think in that instance, I, I haven't been there in years, but I think that got resolved after, like, I think a Jeep winched the gate open. 
because they knew it was a public right of way, they knew it was, wasn't supposed to be blocked. I mean, a lot of these off road community people are very much up to snuff on the laws and the ethics, and um, you know, just a couple of drunk good old boys don't give them a good name, but they, a lot of them are very responsible. Um, yeah. So, um, I've been doing a lot of research on land use in general, and the classics roads, as long as they're, um, it, well, it, I don't think they're a safety issue as such, just exist in their existence. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, well, I was thinking like in the case of a fire or an accident, there's so many needs maybe ones up in there. And there's a gate, like, blocking it. That's right. what I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I gotcha, yeah. Does, that, does it have, would they even try going up uh, six class six? When I signed the waiver, when I built my place on class six road, I live on Old Kinsman Highway, which is a class six road that crosses into Enfield. I'm in, I'm in Grafton. Um, but I had to sign a waiver saying I did not need to be rescued. Mm -hmm. But the understanding was, you know, you plow your road, it's not a mud pit, like, we'll make a decent effort. That was, and I, I, I trust that just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking of like fire apparatus, but I'm sure they just have big old bolt cutters. They don't let anything stop them. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Fabiars was uh, pretty, uh, pretty proud to say that he would have uh, really plowed right through all the parked cars <laughs> throughout the pond if he needed to get through there. Uh, all the people parked in the middle of the road. Cars aren't going to be there. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, roads, another thing to, uh, and the, the whole discontinuance versus class six status. I don't know, are you guys familiar with all that? Um, a, a town can vote to discontinue a road entirely meaning that it is no longer a public right of way. Um, it has to go on the warrant. Um, and my personal belief is there are very few reasons to throw up a road like mm -hmm. that, that like keeping public rights away are valuable for public exploration and valuable for uh, future development and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it just, there's got to be a really compelling reason, but that's that's an opinion, mm -hmm. um, and I think there are so many class six roads because it used to be more consistently settled, like 150 years ago or whatever. But there's mostly farming and logging at that point. Right, but you know, cellar holes all over all these yeah. abandoned roads, and yeah. so it's uh, so someone lives so somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should add the road thing to our list of things to consider, but um, I can't say that that's going to be a huge priority. Um, you know, it crossed my mind. Um, I wonder if we should consider delegating one task to each of us rather than all try to collaborate collaboratively do each one. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, um, and this doesn't have to happen immediately, but I, um, I'm happy to draft a subdivision regulations. And I, we, we went through it for the last couple of years, little bit, little bit, little bit, and it was like really hard um, just because of how many different opinions there are. Um, it's, it, it's hard to, actually make any changes. Um, whereas maybe 
drafting something from scratch and then like looking at it all, all together would be easier than deciding to pull this or pull that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of the master plan, maybe, I mean, you've, you've expressed a fair amount of interest in that, although biting that off as an individual would be a huge task. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to take it one little chunk at a time with each person who wants to. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be willing to help look, get with the best yeah, plan. Look through it. Yeah. See what needs to be fixed and what needs to be updated or deleted. I mean, Russell made some really good points last meeting, um, and I want to tie back into what he is hoping to share uh, with us for this meeting, but he, he made a point that the efficiency of representative democracy is huge. Like, can you imagine if every single decision the select board made had to be put on the town warrant? Nothing would ever get done. Mm -hmm. And so like uh, the potential to do a master plan that is relying on the trusted opinions of a number of elected officials instead of having to, uh, we'd have to look into the legitimacy of that because there may be some requirements for surveys and everything, but um, I, mean, I don't want to like pretend like we know everything that everybody in town wants, but if we do want to make a new master plan, it may be sensible to try to, uh, to use our own, uh, I mean, I don't know if opinions is the right word, but like, make projections as best we can as elected board members and see if the result is anywhere near what um, the bulk of the townspeople would want. It's, it seems that other master plans that I've seen or read, um, which aren't many, um, are really the work of, of, you know, lots of input, lots and lots of input from as many people as you can get involved. Anybody who's willing to be involved. That was sort of my impression too, and so like the balance of as much input as possible with not having too many cooks in the kitchen mm -hmm. to like make it too yeah, slow. Yeah, so I think it make it probably makes sense to have the planning board kind of spearhead the effort, but to you know have community nights or whatever, you know whatever they are to bring people in to get your opinion about you know what do you think the town should look like. Yeah. How long did it take to write the original? I don't know. I mean, two of the crafters of it are still here in town, yeah. Jenny and Paul Jalbert. They're both still in town. We should yeah, probably yeah. try to invite them. I think we ought to. Yeah. I don't see any reason not to. I like that I can invite them here. Um, just to hear what it was like in mm -hmm. 87 or What did you learn? What went well? What did go so well? Like, what was frustrating? What, yeah. Let's see what changes they would suggest. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Seems how they've been here longer than all of us. Yeah, yeah. They might have some insight into what they think people might want to see. Yep. Um, Sabrina, what if you were to get into any of this stuff? What's the most appealing to you? Do you like the idea of the subdivision regs? Do you like the idea of the master plan? Do you um, have any other planning board related stuff that you would? latch on to. Um, I know you said it's not a high priority, but I am, uh, would be interested in the um, class six roads. All right, no, that's, that's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, tying into the last thing that the board probably ought to do, and Maureen, maybe you can offer some insight into this, but uh, when, Russell, I can't remember if it was when Russell was running or after he got elected to select board. He and I talked a little bit, and he said that he was really frustrated by how this town, like, operates. Like, a, a, anything they have to spend money on, it's like a crisis. And that the idea would be to save money, get some savings accounts, get the ability to plan ahead and have the ability to pay for things <coughs> when they needed to be paid for without feeling like um, it was completely draining all the funds. And so that's 
I mean, his hope for this evening was to talk a little bit about capital improvement plans. Um, I mean, the irony of this is I believe the planning board is required to exist in order for any of the town functions to have a capital improvement program. Um, and the, the planning board itself does not have one. I don't expect it needs to be big money, um, but that's something that we would need to steerhead as a board. Um, let me, let me look Wouldn't it typically be the select board or like the budget committee that would put together a capital improvement plan? Possibly, but I think that, um, let, me, uh, let me look real quick and start this right back up. Russell says, my biggest thing to talk about getting department heads to come up with a capital improvement plan so we can plan for major expenses. We have a master plan that allows us to venture in that direction, but the request needs to come from the planning board. I, I said, I'll try to start that discussion tonight. He said, I think it's best for department heads to throw us information and start there. They need to, they know what they, okay, sorry, I'm going to start that again to read it correctly. I think it's best for department heads to throw us information and start there. They know what they need 10 years from now. Um, that's giving us an awful lot of credit, but, um, right, I'm going to start this back up. So it, uh, it sounds to me like the board needs to decide that they would like a capital improvements plan. Um, and, you know, there's discussion about wanting to, uh, well, we want to try to make a new master plan, and we don't know if we're going to need to pay somebody to help us with that. I mean, I, I could totally toss a coin on whether we're going to figure out how to do it ourselves or we're going to throw up our hands and go ask Upper Valley Lake Santa Fe to do it. And I, I don't know which one is right, um, but if we did use them, it would be thousands of dollars. Yes. Um, not, not tens of thousands. No. But yeah. Different. Well, that would be, I mean, that's kind of my suggestion is that, like, our budget is super minimal and we have demonstrated that we are frugal with it, like we've never used it. Um, we dip $25 out of it and yeah, it pays right back. Mostly mm -hmm. used for paying postage and mm -hmm. things like that. And it's always reimbursed. Yeah. Um, I think we had a dollar or two surplus because we charged a dollar or two more <laughs> than the mailing. So it's like... Um, you know, it's not like we're going out to dinner on the tax dollars. So, um, I don't have a problem with adding money to a capital improvements program. If, you know, these things happen, uh, it, it's determined that funds aren't needed, they're dissolved, it goes back to the general fund. It's not like we're going to try to blow it. And, and that's, uh, I remember like an outing club in college that's like budgeted quite a lot of money, it's like $19,000 a year. You know, and this is for like thousands of kids and like lots of, you know, canoes and kayaks and rock climbing gear and tents and things and the van and all, all this stuff. But if you didn't spend it, you weren't getting that again the next year. And I think we can be bigger and better than that. Like we can take money and not spend it. I feel like that's something that we can, that we can demonstrate trust. Um, so, what, what kind of numbers do you think? Thousand dollars a year? I would say a minimum of thousand dollars a year. Because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think to join the, the Lake Sunday group, it's two thousand dollars. That's what we are. Yeah. But that isn't going to come out of your budget. It's the town that would be paying for that. It's not the Upper Valley Lake Sunday Regional Planning Commission, is not it's good point. your responsibility. It's the town's responsibility. It's, That's, a good point. It's, it, hmm? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So it, won't, it will not come out of your budget. So but it still needs to be budgeted. Though. But your master plan, if you want to hire someone to help you with it, you will be paying for that. So you might want to put some money aside in your budget next year for your master plan. And Lake uh, Upper Valley 
blah, 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 mm. um, will also help you with it. They help you with lots of stuff because you belong, but related to the master plan, they will ask for some money from you mm. for the master plan. Um, I see the nuance of what you're saying, mm. although I feel like painting it that way might just be making it look like we're untrustworthy. I don't understand. The planning board is going to be the one who needs to pay for it, whether it's through raising the funds through a capital improvement or not. I mean, the, the whole, like, being part of the planning commission is, a, is something that the planning board would use. Um, like, I, well, I don't think we should pretend like we are some entity separate from the town. Well, what I'm saying is, in the past, we did belong to it. Yeah. The money never, ever came out of the planning board budget. Was it from the general fund, or what was the... It was, oh gosh. Selectman's it was in the selectman's budget. Yeah. It was a line item in the selectman's budget. And it was the selectman that decided not to belong to it anymore. So if it belonged to planning board, it would be the planning board that would decide they didn't want to belong to it anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I don't, yeah, go on. If, if, if we wanted to be a member, yeah. we, it sounds like what we would do is we would plead our case to the select board and ask to be, have that money put into the budget. Yep. What it sounds like. They they also asked me at their select board money, at the, one of the select board meetings how I felt about that, mm -hmm. and I told them that you know it was a good idea because when we belonged to it, planning board had a lot of access to it related to legal questions that you had also, mm -hmm. and the select board decided not to go with it anymore because we were on the tail end of the commission. Um, it's Enfield and Canaan and mm -hmm. all those towns up there who benefit more from their mind and it's related to highways and things like that. And we were really on the tail end and we didn't benefit a lot from the work that they did when they got together. So that's part of the reason why the select board decided not to go with them anymore. But I really feel it would be a good idea to do it. Um, and you can always not join next year, I mm -hmm. mean the year after if it doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I said this before, one of the reasons that I think it's important, one of them, because we have no bus service out here, and they are related to also helping to get bus service to come into different towns. So are you talking like advanced transit style? The one that goes into Cape, the one that, one that goes from Cane into Lebanon or whatever. Yeah. If we belong to that, we can kind of maybe pressure them to get them to come all the way into Grafton, which I feel is really important for some people yeah, to get like to the hospital or the shopping. I mean, but we are on the Last leg of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mess going to see it once that comes. But yeah. You, but you, you have, have to call for, for it, don't you? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that so that, that's that that's one of one of the benefits of wine. But like I said, I had so much access to the legal stuff when I was brand new on the board, mm -hmm. and the lawyer that that I I worked with was incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. just that alone is worth it. Um, and capital improvements plan, you don't need to have any money to do that. You guys do it, or um, the selectmen can uh, put a group together to do it. It's, it's, it's not a lot to work on. And we already have permission to do it. Okay. I think that I would probably want to wait for Russell to be here <laughs> to make the... Just, just to hear his perspective as the, as the select board ex officio before we like make a vote mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. how to go about that. Um, Each year when we vote for war articles that include um, do we approve um, putting in $25,000 into some capital you know, budget for a new police cruiser, isn't that, is, in, in a sense, the capital improvement plan? It is, and so I think that you would just simply see the warrant, like do you vote for thousand dollars to be put in the planning board capital improvement plan. Is that, do we need to do it that way? You lost me there, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, my understanding with the capital improvement plan is that it's something that needs to be on the warrant each year. Uh, the dollar amount needs to be on the warrant. The, the, um, in your red notebook, there's a little, a little tiny bit of information there. Okay. And if you want me to get more information, I can get more and bring it to you next meeting. Um, 
I've ranted and raved about this at many, many town meetings. You're taking money, you're, you're putting $50,000 in an account to buy a police cruiser. You're putting $100,000 in to buy a fire truck. You're putting this money in for that and that and that. In a capital reserve fund, a uh, capital improvements plan, you put the whole amount in. Mm -hmm. You make a decision year to year mm -hmm. to year where you want that money to be spent. So we have a lot of money like sitting in an account getting, what, 3% interest, maybe? Mm -hmm. And we don't intend to buy for 10 years down the road. It's sort of like writing a check out of your checkbook. You've got $500,000 in there and, oh, I think today we'll buy blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about spending. I'm talking about building it. Like, oh. how, how do you... A war it's a warrant article. That's, that's what I was saying. Put, Every year we do warrant article. a certain amount of money on into the CIP. Yes. Right, and, and yeah. so the, where, where it was like paving town roads and, uh, you know, like re restoration of historical records mm -hmm. and that it would be like a planning board capital improvement fund. I no. think, right. yes, but there, it, it would probably be more focused on the big ticket items. Mm -hmm. The fire truck, the police, prison, the ambulance, stuff like that. So. And it's, it's generally a, a six or a ten year plan. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Six or ten. Interesting. Um, what is this money going to be used for? Um, for uh, for all of the like updated stuff that needs to happen, which we foresee probably needing to belong to the planning commission to be able to adequately write like a new master plan, which should be updated, I think, at, at the most every 10 years. Um, yeah, I mean, we're 30, 36 years out or something. Um, it has been worked on before, but it didn't. It never work. got off the no, ground. No, yeah. no, too much arguing. Hmm. I was on the board then. Yeah. So probably the software doesn't exist that was used for it either. No software. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have lots of information, but no software. <laughs> <laughs> so it probably would be a good idea to look into the fire and somebody to help us. Okay, so I, realistically, I mean, I don't know. Um, here's my basic opinion is that I don't think anybody here is interested in like doing any stupid like embezzlement crap. Like there's no reason we're going to be irresponsible with the existence of the funds. Like, if we get $1,000, $2,000, we build up a capital improvement, like, we, we need to use our discretion, we need to be frugal. Like, if we don't need to use it, we shouldn't buy anything with it. Um, you, you lost me. But what do you, you talk about you having $1,000 in your account and then not uh, buying? I mean, whether it's capital improvement or the planning, uh, or just the planning board budget or anything like that, I think we're all capable of being responsible here. If, if we have money in our bank account, it doesn't mean we have to spend it. Um, but we're foreseeing things that we may need to spend things, so, spend it on. Is it a reserve fund or an there, We're talking about two different things, Jake. We're talking, about, there, there's a reserve, I mean, is the capital improvement plan the same thing as a reserve fund, basically, that you know of? No, it's a, like a bunch of Warren articles. Capital reserve, capital improvements, are those interchangeable? In my mind. That's more what I thought they were too. More or less. So we're talking about two things. A capital improvement slash capital reserve fund, which is a savings plan that occurs and accrues over the years, which has to be voted in each year on the warrant. And the other thing we're talking about is simply the, the town planning board budget, which is annual and we don't keep accruing that. Like if we, right now we have a budget of $200. If we don't spend any of it, and the next year get 200 bucks, it's not like we ever said and have 400. Mm -hmm. It just goes away at the end of the year, so. Um, but what is the reserve fund for? The reserve fund is for um, basically like long-term planning. Um, for, for the but, planning board? Yeah, yeah. 
Plan planning commission membership and legal fees and consultants. any consultants and anything that we need to do that takes classes. Yeah. Books. Yep. Consulting with a lawyer outside mm -hmm. of the department. Yeah. There's lots of stuff that you guys aren't doing that you you know you might need to call some in for a soil test or something. Yep. On a piece of property, mm -hmm. all that money comes out of your. For sure. And and no one would ever think that you were embezzling anything out of it. Well, I mean, you you write you ask for money for it. And you give it to Sarah, and Sarah writes a check, and it shows up in oh, the yeah. town report and everything. So don't feel that way. Well, I mean, we've got the Listen Center guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's a. Uh... Yeah, but you guys are like way too obvious. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that was. I, 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 yeah, I think basically we don't need to feel ashamed to have a budget which we, we had, can we use at our discretion. We had five hundred dollars in. Most of the time, mm. but we did things differently than you did. We use that money to pay for the stuff that you now have the client pay for. We used to pay out of it, and then mm. we got reimbursed. That was in the olden days. Well, you had your own checkbook, probably. No. 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 It was done through the. Through your selectman's office. Uh, yeah. So how is it different? Um, we used to pay for the filing and all that kind of stuff, and then the client came in and paid for it after the fact. Oh, interesting. Yeah, rather than, um, I mean, some people got lazy and then wanted the, um, the client to do all the work. I, I think that, I mean, we, we've been doing both ways, depending on who the surveyor is and what's being done. But it seems like an awful lot of the time there's a fair amount of good faith and like the checks are waving at one another through the mail. and. Mm -hmm. It, it, I, I need to accountable. ask Sarah this question. Yeah. When they fill out a, an application for a mm -hmm. permit, do they, are they paying up front? Um, or are they paying you? They typically don't pay anything until we get to look at it. Um, oh, no, they pay when they're supposed to pay when they submit their... Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure that that's... Uh, I mean, that's something that could change, but... Um, you know, I still think that the function of this board is effectively volunteer based and it doesn't cost the town anything to look at an application and say sure this looks like it makes sense or no this doesn't make sense um, related to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, town regulations, state regulations, and um, I'm trying to be gentle here, but I don't feel that anything really gets done correctly in this town. I think it's probably got some level of accuracy to it. It's sort of <laughs> like, you know, if you attend a selectman's meeting, I, I say that it's sort of like having a conversation at Thanksgiving dinner, oh yeah, we should do this, we should do that, we should do blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 